if we don't do anything to control the goals, they're just the, the numbers of our ground nesting birds are just never going to recover. Triple S eyes, these beautiful landscapes that are full of these rare red and amber listed birds that are just getting decimated year on year. If it is left as it is, it will get to such a stage where it is actually causing major problems again. They've got a problem coming at them and at the moment nobody wants to listen to it. Time is ticking and we need to make a move on this now. The problem we have with these, the goals is the sheer number on the moor. I think up here at the minute there's in excess of 10,000 nesting pair laying two to three eggs per pair. Out of those three eggs, two and a half chicks per pair. So the, the size of the gullery is just is growing massively each year. Worldwide, the, the gull population is declining, but in Borland, we have the numbers are, are just growing constantly. And the damage that they're doing is, is unbearable. There is a licensing system in place. One estate in the Trough of Borland did get a license to cull 10 gulls which is, it's not going to have, it's not going to have any, any effect at all on the ground nesting birds. Well, our problems really started uh, just about 2005. Uh, that year we f is the first year that we started seeing gulls arriving just over our boundary. Since then, they've, they've been pretty much unmolested and they've managed to increase their numbers quite significantly. The last data I have is 2017 and there were then just under 6,000 breeding pairs of gulls which is from a standing start in 11 years. Um, so just under 6,000 breeding pairs plus the juveniles that were loafing on the edge of it and that's expanded since but I don't have any more accurate data after that date. The other problem that we have is that the activity of the gulls has changed quite significantly over the last 30 years. Uh, originally, gull colonies in the Trough of Bolland used to feed largely on the saltire tip, which was an open-air rubbish tip. So they used to roost on the, on the upland areas and then go down to the tip to feed. And as such, they weren't really predating on the moor. But because the saltire tip has now been closed, that food source is denied to them. So they're finding other sources of food round and about. And they're actually predating on the upland areas, on the moors now. And you can see that in their behaviour as they float back and forth over the ground. They're looking and foraging for um, opportunistic um, food. That food source is largely little birds, nesting birds, um, and they're causing a lot of damage up there. I'm John Clark, I'm the Northern Development Officer for the National Gamekeepers Organisation, and what we'd like to see is a robust licensing system, something that, that estates and land managers can can bring out to these areas and say right, we need to control the numbers of these gulls because they're having a marked impact on our red and amber listed birds that we have on the estate. I can see in the foreseeable future that these red and amber listed birds that we've got, so we've got curlew, lapwing, oyster catchers, these birds are dropping in at alarming rate and if we don't do something about it or if we let gulls breed on these really sensitive areas to the extent that they are doing and increasing at the extent that they are doing then we are going to have big trouble in the future. Most people will see seagulls down at the seaside and don't think anything of it, you know, what the damage that they're doing. And this is not about eradication or anything like that, this is about just controlling it down to a reasonable level so all of our other birds that are really struggling can thrive. You know, we've got marked impact on water runoff because the birds are damaging the, the, the landscape of plants so we're getting quicker runoff of water. There's a lot of money being spent to make sure that that doesn't happen and that's being undone by the gulls because the colony is spreading out onto the ground that's had you know, hundreds of thousands of pounds spent on it over the years um, to regenerate these areas of moorland. These sites were designated as triple SIs and special areas of conservation because of the bird life that's on them and the plant life that's here. Something needs to be done. There's more licenses issued in a, an urban setting than what there is on these special sites and you know so we need these licenses to be able to be rolled out more efficiently in the countryside. Hello I'm Gavin Faraday, I farm here in Bleasdale 
we run predominantly fell sheep and a few cows. At the moment, we seem to be having a lot of problem with seagulls. Um, they're taking a lot of uh, newborn lambs. Um, there's nothing we seem to be able to do about it, and there's nothing the sheep can do about it because the volume of seagulls is just um, horrendous at the minute. We seem to be losing quite a few in every field, in every lambing field we have, and it's been getting worse uh, over the last number of years. Say 10 years, it's been getting worse at least. They're also taking the feed that we put out for the sheep. They come and uh, chase the sheep away and then eat all the feed, and it's costing us a fortune in feed bills and the sheep aren't getting any benefit from it and the seagulls are just getting fatter. <laughs> Looking back at the history of gulls and the Trough of Boland, um, they have been a cause of great problems in the past as well. In the 80s and 90s their numbers there were getting to such a degree, such a large level, that they were actually fouling the water supply and bear in mind that that's actually a water supply that supplies most of Greater Manchester. And the E. coli that were developing in the uh, water supplies were beginning to get through into the human food chain. And at that point they had to resort to using poison to reduce the colonies. Um, it had got up to 30,000 breeding pairs I think uh, and they had to use poison to knock it down to about 3,000 breeding pairs and that was in the 80s and 90s. Um, that was the only way that they managed to actually reduce the numbers to a level which didn't affect the water supplies. As we see this exponential growth in gulls on this area now, I have no idea how people are going to turn around and deal with it if it gets back to that level. The concern that I have is that we don't ever want to use poison up there ourselves. Um, we don't want to get forced into the position where something like that might be necessary. Um, but if this, ex this expansion continues, uh, I, I'm really at a loss as to find out how this colony could be controlled. Once it gets beyond a certain stage, uh, just trying to send someone over there to, with a shotgun to deal with it is not even going to touch the surface. Um, it's it's going to cause a major problem uh, unless they keep a hold of it now and they need to start work straight away. I don't think anybody here is trying to advocate that we should be eradicating the gulls. They certainly have a place in the ecology of, of the of the Boland Fells. It's one of the SSSI uh, stated um, protections up there. But the level of expansion that they're getting to now is out of control and it's not under any form of balance and I think that needs to be redressed.